Hello everyone, this is Jesus from Hustling Labs, and today I will be teaching you how to display data from your database in the front end of your application. In this case, what we're going to be displaying is user data that we have saved in our application database. So it's going to be email, company name, first name, last name, and profile picture. What we're going to do is we're going to add a repeating group to the page. And we're going to set the data to mm -hmm. user data. As you can tell, this is an application that is in development. It's been in development for a little bit. And it already has data in it. We're not going to create any constraints here. We're going to talk about constraints in a different video later on. We're going to close this. And I like adding a group inside the repeating group. Let's just add a little bit more. Uh, control. We're going to add some spacing in between elements. It's going to be eight. And we're going to set the content to user data. And it's going to be the current cell user. That means is that whatever is in this group will display what is for that specific user in that row of data in your database. This user will show different data than this user. So this is one row in the repeating group. This is one row in the repeating group and they're different. We're going to span this all the way down to the end. We're going to erase the minimum width and we're going to center it in the repeating group. First thing we're going to add is going to be an image. In this image, we're going to use it to display the user profile image. To add dynamic data, meaning that it changed according to what you're displaying or what row you're displaying. You want to click here on dynamic image, click the blue button that reads insert dynamic data. Click on the parent group, in this case, user. And lastly, you want to click on profile image because that's what we're displaying. We're going to preview this and we're going to take a look and see whether or not we got two images. We only got one image and we're going to go back and take a look at the privacy rules and see, okay, so our privacy rules prevent from anybody that is not the current user from seeing that information. So we're going to authorize everybody to see that information. We're going to refresh the page after we have updated the privacy rules and we still cannot see it. And we have to take a look and see what's going on. I will tell you what, we're going to add a test that is going to contain first and last name. So what we want to do, if we want to display first and last name in the same element, we want to click on the button that reads insert dynamic data. We're going to add the parent user first name. We're going to click out, click back in space bar, click again, the blue button, parent group user last name, click out and that should do it. Go to back and review it. Make sure that it did. We are definitely running into an issue. And okay. So it allows to find the searches. Let's see if the faces the issue. Yes, it did. This is Vasquez. Cool. Matter of fact, they can view all fields. Let's take a look and see. Okay. So this user doesn't have first and last name. So this is going to be Robert Denirofo. I think that's how you write it. I don't know. And there you have it. Now for the next one, what we want to display is the company name. So. Again, we're going to add a test and parent groups company name. This is a little bit different because here in the database, what we did is we link a data type into a different data type. So you have to go a little bit further. So the parent group users company, and now we want the name of that company. 
we're going to make a mesh and this is not a design class so please forgive the way it looks but we do want this at the top and now lastly we want the email address for a user now we're going to displace this in the in the page and as you can tell we get the company which is the same one for both and we have their email addresses first and last name with a space in between and their profile picture there you have it if you have questions about how to display data into a repeating group this is how you do it there are many other things that you can do this is more of basics than anything else but i hope it helped you understand some of the opportunities that comes with developing in bobo and some of the things that you can develop using uh, repeating groups thank you for watching i hope that you learned something from this tutorial if you did please consider sharing this video with others that might benefit from this it allows us to reach more people and teach bubble to others that might be struggling to get started if you have a video that you would like me to produce please consider leaving them down in the comment below and i accept suggestions and i will try to record a video for those that um, have questions and need help please consider subscribing to this video it helps me grow and reach more people and i hope to see you during the next video